is Five Live Formula One with Jenny Gao. Good morning and welcome to qualifying. It is the Japanese Grand Prix, round 18 of the Formula One World Championship and the base this weekend, Suzuka. Yes, it's back on the calendar after a two-year break. Last weekend it was Singapore. Now we take a 3,000 little mile trip up the coast and uh, go to Japan for what is set to be a stunning weekend of action. Yesterday, rainy, Alonso, Russell, top to session each. Today, though, in the dry, it was all about Max Verstappen. He was fastest in the uh, earlier practice session. Can he do it again and get pole position? Jack Nichols, talking about pole position, you are ready to go for qualifying. It's, it's always a good one in Suzuka. Yeah, really entertaining circuit to watch everybody pushing at the limits and it's one of those circuits uh, not dissimilar to Singapore where if you make a mistake you do get punished there's no sort of all run wide and I'll go again next time I and mean, maybe some of the corners but broadly speaking it's a place where you you can be penalized for for making a mistake so really looking forward to it and first qualifying in Suzuka since 2019 which was a Ferrari front row lockout it was. Will it be another Ferrari front row lockout this weekend? That's the question. Uh, Sam Bird, Formula E driver for the Jaguar team, just talk to us about some of the bits on this track that make a driver come alive, because it is, as Jack said, great track. Hey, you've got some of the best corners on the entire calendar, Jenny, literally one after the other, or, or in some cases spread out around the track i mean I, I mentioned yesterday that i'm a particular fan of 190r at the end of the lap but um you'd have to throw in degna there as well super challenging um long spoon curb as well so there's there's lots to look forward to in this track lots for the viewer to enjoy going on board through sector one is particularly fun as well where the car changes direction from left to right really gracefully so a lot to look forward to on today's show. Yeah, gusting winds, um, one of the issues for the drivers today, but the sky relatively blue, cloud laden a little bit, but the huge Ferris wheel there and the um, sort of theme park that dots alongside Suzuka and the fans have come back in their droves. Andrew Benson, it's one of the most unique races of the season and families flock to watch these fast cars around this incredible circuit it is unique jenny as you say you walk through an amusement park to uh, to get to the track or you can uh, when you get to the track the fans are all uh, massed against the sort of barriers uh, wearing all sorts of homemade paraphernalia supporting one driver or another and um, it's uh, an atmosphere like no no other on the calendar jack tra championship permutations please because max verstappen could again <laughs> win this weekend the long and short of it is if he wins with fastest lap, he's the champion. If he wins and Leclerc isn't second, then he's the champion. There's other things of if he finishes second and third and fourth and whatever. But broadly speaking, it feels like those are the two main scenarios, right? Either Verstappen will beat Leclerc or Leclerc will beat Verstappen. And if Leclerc beats Verstappen, we carry on. If Verstappen beats Leclerc, there'll be like one point in it, whether he gets it wrapped up or not. So fastest lap will be key. Um, 27 times out of the 31 races we've had, a front row starter has finished winning this race. So all eyes will be on who can set the fastest lap, who will start on the front row when it comes to the race tomorrow. By the way, race gets underway at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, we're expecting some more weather. Wet yesterday, potentially dry to start with and wet tomorrow. So... All eyes on qualifying. 50 seconds to go until the session gets underway. As we said, we've got Andrew Benson, Sam Bird and Jack Nichols. And just a bit of news for any of you waking up who weren't with us for free practice earlier on this morning, for which there is no blame apportioned to you. Uh, it was announced that Esteban Ocon will be um, racing for Alpine next season alongside Pierre Gasly, who is moving across from the... Alpha Tauri team to join Alpine, so it'll be an all French lineup there. And then Nick de Vries will be joining Alpha Tauri. So that was announced this morning as we sort of uh, thought it was coming, and then it 
did come. Good save, Jack. Well done. <laughs> Good <you>. save. <laughs> Got away with that one, didn't I? Right. Cars making their way. No, I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, cars making their way towards the end of the pit lane with 18 minutes on the clock. The light goes green now. For those of you syncing up, we've got 56, 55, 54 seconds left on the clock. And Latifi is first out, followed by uh, Sonoda and Gasly. Jenny. Yeah, just a little update from the Williams team. They were fined 1,000 euros. Uh, they fitted a mixed set of tyres onto Alex Albon's car in free practice three. You're not allowed to do that. So in front of the FIA, they went and 1,000 pounds into the party Christmas coffers for the FIA. Hey. And that was a set of medium compound tyres, I think, wasn't it, Jenny? You say so, yep. If I say so, yeah. <laughs> no, just we saw Joe Bauer out at the front of the Williams garage during FP1 and looking very disgruntled at the mechanics and speaking with them in depth. So Yeah, it was a medium spec tyre. You're yes. absolutely correct. There we go. What is going on underneath Leclerc's Ferrari? That's the, the question I have. There's still quite a lot of work under the floor sort of right in the middle of the car. Leclerc's car is still up on the stands. He's climbing it into it anyway, so, and they've got plenty of time-ish, 16 minutes and 45 seconds to go, but it still looks like a little too late to be just doing a bit of front wing flap. Uh, he looked relaxed. There, were, there didn't seem to be much panic going on in the garage, so I'm sure that that car will make it out. When you're in a Ferrari or a Red Bull, to be honest, as long as the session is green and there's no interruptions, you only need one lap and you'll be through. It's, it's more the people that are on the fringe where you would start to panic and, and need to try and extract every single thing from the car. Sonoda, Latifi and Gasly, still the only three drivers that have headed out onto the circuit. As they come down now into the chicane at the end of the lap. Uh, out across the line comes Nicholas Latifi to start his flying lap, followed by Gasly, followed by Sonoda in that order. Loads of Alpha Tauri flags in the grandstand, as you might imagine. Supporting Yuki Sonoda, the Japanese racer getting a round of applause, in fact, as he comes down the start-finish straight and in towards Turn 1. Sonoda making his Formula 1 debut at Suzuka. Haven't phrased that very well. Sonoda racing in Formula One at Suzuka for the first time, or Yuki Sonoda racing at Suzuka for the first time in Formula One. Whichever way of those phrases you want to uh, choose. Plenty of, perm plenty of permutations this weekend. 15 minutes and 12 seconds on the clock. Sonoda coming into Degna One, then into Degna Two. The two right-handers that then take him under the bridge of the crossover and up towards the hairpin. The first sector, the quickest is Sonoda by a couple of tenths of a second over his teammate Pierre Gasly. Uh, Lando Norris has now left the pits in the McLaren, so finally someone else has decided to leave. A little bit surprised that Alpha Tauri have uh, gone out this early. I didn't really expect them to be sort of... I don't expect them to be back markers in the way that, you know, the Williams going out early and the uh, Hasses going out early tend to be. But we'll see what happens. Uh, they've obviously got... Um, maybe a few more tyres to play with in general because of the lack of running this weekend. 14 minutes and 25 seconds to go. Jenny? Yeah, they also didn't have a great free practice three. Gasly was actually right down at the bottom of the timings and um, Sonoda was only a couple of places above him. Now, I'm sure Sonoda's going out there to please the fans, but there's definitely work to do for Alfa Tauri. They're not particularly comfortable this weekend so far. Sonoda does a 316 which is four tenths of a second quicker than Pierre Gasly and Latifi returned to the pit lane then. So Latifi did that Williams trick of a little sighting lap and then returning to the pit lane. So that 31.6 for Sonoda is already seven tenths quicker than he managed in free practice three. Obviously the track will be getting a little better uh, as, the, as the day goes on and a bit more rubbered in, although there's not a huge amount of well, there's no sort of high-powered support series, let's say. It's not like you've got Formula 2 to run around and, and put some more rubber down as well. It's only really the Formula 1 running that is that is major this weekend. Lando Norris on an outlap in McLaren. And that fight between McLaren and Alpine, even Aston Martin, looked really tight this morning, I thought. 
It did. I thought that Alpine yesterday had a massive advantage over McLaren, but it did seem to, in the dry, come to within a couple of tenths of each other. So it will be interesting this afternoon and, and going into tomorrow to see who's got the edge. I, I still think Fernando has got the edge potentially over over McLaren, especially especially Fernando, but let's see. Only Porsche Carrera Cup Japan qualifying uh, in between F1 and, and this, and uh, or between FP3 and this. So... In fact, that's the only other support series here this weekend. Normally, there's some really great single-seaters, which, uh, which are a lot of fun, sort of local national single-seater racing, kind of like Formula Ford kind of style. Maybe they've got a, a couple of wings, but well, they're they a lot of fun. To have, they used to have, I think, Japanese F3, didn't they? Uh, but that's unfortunately, that, that was such a strong series, and it's, it's died of death. Um, such a shame. You know, you've got... You've got some incredible drivers that have come through that. Um, I think oh, you've got historically, you've got some big names, and then more more recently, even people like Marcus Ericsson went over to Japanese F3 to learn their trade. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Sonoda's still quickest with Gasly second, four tenths of a second between them still, but we're going to get some more lap times incoming very shortly, including from Norris, from Hamilton, and from Russell. Hamilton's only a hundredth down on Sonoda after sector one but he is on the medium tyres as is George Russell so both Mercedes out on the mediums Jenny yeah I spoke to Ferrari to ask about Charles Leclerc they said no issues going to run and uh, he has now left the garage and he's on his out lap so just Alonso Ocon and Albon and Latifi who are in the pits at the moment 11 minutes and 22 seconds to go here comes Norris to go quickest two tenths quicker than Yuki Sonoda Verstappen and Perez are on quick laps. Sound you can hear now is Hamilton in the Mercedes through the middle sector split. And he is half a second down on Norris, but he is on the medium tyre, Lewis Hamilton, as he comes through 130R and then down into the chicane, onto the brakes and through the right at 55 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour through the left part of the chicane and then out across the line and Hamilton slots into third place in between the two Alfa Tauris. Perez is half a second up on Lando Norris after the middle sector. Verstappen is quicker than Perez in the first sector by two tenths of a second. So Perez will soon go to the top of the times. There he goes, a one minute 30.622, but Verstappen is up on Perez's time. Carlos Sainz has come through sector one and pretty much matched Verstappen. Middle sector is good from Verstappen. I'll keep an eye on uh, Sainz's middle sector. Verstappen goes to the top, four tenths quicker than Perez, a one minute 30.224, but Sainz is going quicker at the moment. So I don't know whether we, uh, it's because we've spoken about it so many times, Jack, um, but going on board with, with Hamilton, it just looks like when, when he gets towards, uh, you know, above sort of 270, 280 kilometers an hour, it's like the car, Hits, hits a brick wall and doesn't continue to accelerate. You, you hear it from the engine. It looks, it doesn't look free and easy to continue to accelerate. Whereas you watch the, the Honda powered Red Bull and the aerodynamics on the Red Bull and the car continues to, to push through the air and, and you hear the engine note change constantly down, down the straight. Verstappen quickest, Sainz has just gone second fastest in the Ferrari, only a tenth away from Max Verstappen and ahead of Sergio Perez, Charles Leclerc is two tenths down on Verstappen after sector one and then Daniel Ricciardo is fourth quickest at the moment, uh, six tenths ahead of his teammate Lando Norris, Stroll is sixth, Sonoda seventh, Russell Vettel, Hamilton, Gasly, the 11 drivers at the moment, Mick Schumacher comes through to go seventh fastest. So that's a big jump up the order from Schumacher to get ahead of both Alpha Tauris. The Mercedes, a reminder, on the medium tyre on that first run. So they've given themselves a little bit of work to do, Mercedes, just in case of a, of a red flag or, or something similar. They could be up in a bit of trouble. They'll be hoping they won't be, of course. Here comes Leclerc across the line, and he too goes within two tenths of Max Verstappen. Did the fastest middle sector of anyone, did Charles Leclerc, but two tenths down in sector one compared to uh, Carlos Sainz. So that's where he lost some time. 
Right, so there's more time in it for both of the Ferraris. Eight minutes and 23 seconds on the clock. Here comes Joe across the line. Bottas has gone sixth. Joe goes tenth. So Bottas in between the two McLarens. But there's quite a big gap, really, between Ricardo and the rest of the of the midfield. It's I a great lap Ricardo's that from Ricardo. done a great job. But I still think that even though he's done that lap, I think he might have to go again, Jack because I think that there is quite a lot of track evolution out there. I mean, Verstappen, Sainz, Leclerc, they're fine. I think that they're, they're, they're going to be absolutely fine. But everybody else, I think you're going to have to run again. Alex Albon, a second down after the middle sector on Verstappen. So that's pretty decent, actually, here. I wonder where this is going to slot Alex Albon. Maybe ahead of Sonoda and uh, possibly into the top 10. Here comes Albon. It isn't quite. It is 11th place for Alex Albon, but he does get ahead of Yuki Sonoda. Just Alonso and Ocon yet, yet to set lap times. Ocon goes into sixth place and Alonso goes fourth. Alonso just three tenths back from Max Verstappen and up into fourth place in the Alpine. It's rapid around here by the looks of things, that Alpine. Seven minutes and seven seconds left on the clock. We're just having a look at Lando Norris, who almost got into the gravel on the exit of Degna 2. Picked up a little bit of gravel on the left-hand side. And was that a... When was that lap from Norris, I wonder? That might have been his... Could potentially have been his quick lap, or he might have been pushing no, again. He, back, he backed off on that lap, Jack, so then he backed off and went again. Yeah. But by that point, you've taken a lot out of the tyre in the first sector. So that I think that's probably contributed to the difference between him and Daniel Ricciardo. Gasly and Sonoda are on some quite strong laps here. Here comes Pierre Gasly. He goes up into ninth place, four tenths quicker than George Russell's time. But Sonoda is now coming out of the final corner. Where's this going to put him? Up into tenth. Gasly got a problem with the brakes. He's up into ninth. Sonoda is tenth. Verstappen is quickest. Sainz second. Leclerc third. Alonso fourth. Perez fifth. Ricardo, Ocon, Bottas, Gasly, Sonoda the top ten. Norris only in eleventh. Twelfth for Stroll. Thirteenth is Schumacher. Fourteenth is Joe. Fifteenth is Albon. At the moment, eliminated would be Russell, Magnussen, Vettel, Hamilton, and Latifi. But the Mercedes are both on outlaps on a set of soft tyres, ready to get going again, and uh, hopefully they will, hope, book themselves a place in Q2. Jenny. Yeah, Lewis Hamilton just taking the first position out there on track, and George Russell following him on track, as you say, both on those uh, new soft tyres. Big lock up from Yuki Tsunoda as he did his second uh, push lap. Here's his radio. Uh, Mercedes were amazing. I don't know what he said. He said braking's not amazing, and oh, you can okay. see why. He actually did very well to uh, see the fact that he had an enormous lockup and he was carrying far too much speed into the corner and used the curb, took an enormous amount of curb, used the curb to slow the car and turn the car. Good thinking. Hamilton out on a set of soft tyres with five minutes to go. 19th quickest at the moment, Lewis Hamilton. 16th for George Russell as they get ready to do their run on the softs, basically, when everybody else is back in the pit lane, fundamentally. Uh, Albon has just had a lap time deleted for track limits at turn 14, so he now has no lap time. Work on brakes, straight line braking, when you can. Yeah, I know, I think! Angry Sonoda again, but uh, work on the brakes in the straight line. Both the Alpha Tauri struggling with their brakes. I tell you what, the, the Alpha Tauri boys don't don't speak very nicely to their team, do they? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh. Uh, turn 13, by the way, is Spoon. It's the it's the first part of Spoon. Andrew Benson. Franz Tost, the Alpha Tauri team principal, was saying in the news conference earlier today that Yuki Tsunoda still needs to work on his discipline, both in and out of the car. That message has been... He's been struggling <laughs> to knock that message into Tsunoda's head for about 20 months now, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Still yeah. hasn't gone in. Exactly. Uh, three minutes and 42 seconds on the clock. Uh, the Mercedes are out on circuit. They've done OK first sectors, not setting the world alight on those soft tyres, but probably enough to, to see them through. Hamilton coming through the 
second part of Spoon. He's further around the lap than Russell is through that middle sector. Hamilton now, and he is about four tenths down. So this is only going to be good enough for the sort of middle of the pack here for Mercedes. Oh, Russell's going a little quicker than Hamilton by about three tenths of a second. Here they come out of the final corner. Hamilton goes seventh fastest. And that's all on the second run of the day. Might get another lap in potentially. Here comes Russell and he goes up to sixth fastest. So at the moment they look very much slower than the Alpines Mercedes and are, and are in that midfield fight. I mean, we say it like we're surprised now. They, they ha it has been a struggle for them all season. There's been glimpses of hopes um, where they've been relatively quick. I mean, obviously, George Russell getting pole position in Hungary being the highlight of showing pace. But they've never really gone to a weekend as they have in the last six or seven years and dominated, have they? They've always struggled and we're always sounding shocked that they're struggling. Well, look, they've struggled all year. Yeah, but they're usually a bit clear in the midfield, aren't they? They're usually a little clear of the, of the McLarens and the Alpines. Jenny? Yeah, I think they were always aware that Japan might not have been a track that would suit their car um, this year. It has been, they've been so dominant at Japan for so many years, but this year it's all different since the regulation change. And when they were looking at races they thought they could challenge in, this is definitely not one of them. They highlighted America potentially, if it wasn't too bumpy, potentially Brazil. But yeah, they're running out of chances to get a win, very much so. I even think, Jenny, that those two circuits that you've mentioned will be tricky because they're power circuits. I mean, Brazil and, and Austin, you need you need good straight line speed ability. And that's something that the, the Mercedes just doesn't have this season. One minute, 20 seconds on the clock. At the moment, eliminated would be Joe, Magnussen, Vettel, Latifi and Albon. Schumacher is on the bubble in 15th. Stroll is there in 14th. So the Aston Martins, after looking quite spicy in free practice three earlier on, are now a little bit nowhere. Vettel's only 700s up on Schumacher after the first sector. And Schumacher's time is the 15th quickest. Stroll's done a reasonable first sector, which is a couple of tenths quicker than Vettel has managed. Bottas is four tenths away from... Verstappen after sector one. He's running in 10th place at the moment, Valtteri Bottas. The top five have all elected to stay in the pit lane. So Verstappen, Sainz, Leclerc, Alonso and Perez all happy enough with their job out there. Uh, Stroll is on a bad lap here, Lance Stroll. I wonder if he's made a mistake somewhere. His first sector was reasonable. Oh, he's finding some time now in the middle sector. So it might not all be lost. This is going to be a real flurry of lap times before too long. Vettel onto the brakes, into the final couple of corners. He's going to be the first to come across the line. Latifi jumps up into 14th place. Lando Norris is on a very quick lap in the McLaren. Here comes Vettel up to 10th. So Vettel up to 10th in the Aston Martin. Next across the line comes Lance Stroll, and he only goes 14th. That's going to be a tricky one for Stroll to make it through with Vettel up in 10th position. Ocon goes up into 9th position. Bottas goes into 10th. So Bottas gets ahead of Vettel. Joe goes up into 8th place, quicker than Valtteri Bottas. Good lap from the Alfa Romeo driver, faster than his teammate. Now here come the Haas drivers. Schumacher is next across the line. He goes up into 11th position. And then Magnussen only goes 16th. So Schumacher out qualifies Magnussen in the end fairly comfortably. Lando Norris bouncing over the curbs as he comes through the chicane. Norris in the McLaren comes through and goes up into eighth place. Still slower than his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. So Magnussen and Stroll are out of the running. Sonoda gets up into 12th position. Sonoda goes through into Q2. His teammate Gasly does not. And now it's going to be Albon or Vettel. Those are the two choices as to who will advance into the final part, uh, into the second part of qualifying. Vettel's on the bubble at the moment in 15th, having said his lap time. Albon is just coming now into the final chicane in the Williams. Got his first lap time deleted for track limits at Spoon. Gets on the power out across the line and Albon goes 16th. It's not enough. So Vettel makes it through. Albon eliminated in 16th, 17th for Gasly, 18th Magnussen, 19th Stroll, 20th Nicholas Latifi. And that's a good job from 
Sonoda and Schumacher, you, you have to say. Sonoda, Schumacher and Joe all ending that session quicker than their teammates, but Sonoda and Schumacher making it through where Gasly and Magnussen did not. Gasly had a big lockup at the, at the hairpin that cost him a lot of time. So good runs there, I think, from, from those two. Here's Gasly's radio. I asked to wait. No point to do the love with no brakes. Can't break. Gasly, I, I never really heard Gasly that angry on the radio before. I, I think he is quite animated. You've heard him when when it's going well. He's he's very loud and very animated. When it's gone badly, he can be as well. And I think now, I think the relationship at that team between himself and 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 the engineers is fractured. It seems it seems like he's now just annoyed all the time, and nothing that they do will please him. He's had an issue with the brakes, and and it's everybody else's fault now. You know, he's moving on, so it's everybody else's fault. Um, it is difficult when you've got issues with brakes. Trust me, it's it's not a it's not a fun thing. But um, uh, you know, I, I hope that he can continue to work well with his engineers for the rest of the season. Otherwise, it's it's not going to be. It's not going to be pleasant for either for either the, the engineers or, or himself. Oh, Sam, I spoke to him um, last week after the race um, in the media pen, and he was the angriest I've ever seen him. He was fuming. He was very, very quick to throw blame at the team for messing up. They brought him in on the wrong lap. And, um, yeah, he was furious. And I remember recording the podcast afterwards, and, and Jack and I going, well... Clearly, the announcement's coming this week then because there's no way he's going to be staying at the team and um, letting off such a tirade of um, disappointment <laughs> towards Alpha Tauri. So, yeah, uh, he's, he's not in a good place with the team right now. No, absolutely. And do you know what? Formula One and, and motorsport in general is the only sport really where you can you can get away with doing that, with throwing your team un, under the bus or, or, or speaking badly about your team and then, you know... It's it's fine for you to to drive the next weekend. If you did that as a as a as a Premier League footballer or as a rugby yeah, player, you so would true. you would be benched for the rest of the season or oh, sold true, Good job. immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Schumacher being told they were through to the second bout of qualifying. Um, yeah, it's so true. I hadn't really I hadn't really thought of that before. But yeah, Gasly out. Stappen quickest. Sainz second. Leclerc third. Alonso fourth. Perez fifth. Ocon, Russell, Ricardo, Norris and Joe, the top 10. Hamilton in 11th, ahead of Sonoda, Schumacher, Bottas and Vettel. The 15 that will advance through to the second part of qualifying. Jenny? Yeah, and a good one for Mick Schumacher, as you already pointed out, in P13. Managing to get uh, two tenths faster than his teammate Magnussen and, and get through to the second part of quality. And boy, does he need this. Um, it's no secret that he's now kind of head-to-head -head against Nico Hülkenberg for his seat at Haas next year. And he had a big crash yesterday after the chequered flag in free practice won. Um, they've had to put him in the spare chassis because there was so much damage. So as a precaution, rather than trying to rebuild it and work out what was really damaged, they just put him in a spare chassis. So he missed all of the running of free practice too, which was a wet session. So not too damaging to him, but he really needs a good weekend this weekend to try and win back some favour with Gunter Steiner. Apparently it costs £450,000 to fix that car. That's a lot of money. I'd give Schumacher another year, honestly, if it were me. I'd give I'd give him one more. But if, you, if all you're going to do is bring back Hulkenberg, who I, who I rate very highly, don't get me wrong. I, I, I think Schumacher, for me, has, has done enough for, for another season. Has not set the world alight, don't get me wrong. But another, I, don't, I don't see the harm in another year, other than, I suppose, quite literally, the, the, the accident costs. Because there was... But that's kind of dialed back a little bit, hasn't it, since, um, since Monaco. There were some big crashes earlier in the year, and Monaco was one of them. And Gunther Steiner said, we can't afford to keep crashing but yeah I don't know I'd, I'd, I'd give Schumacher one more year Jenny I, I'm in your camp as well I also think I'd 
probably give him another year. And when you look at, uh, okay, qualifying, he's been consistently outperformed by Kevin Magnussen. It's 5 to 13 now. But in races, Schumacher 10 to 5. So he, I know he's only on 12 points compared to Magnussen, but actually when it comes to the pairing and the battles between them, um, final finishing places, he's done better than I thought. Yeah. Yeah, and look, I, I'm by no means saying Schumacher's, you know, superb and and is a future world champion or 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 anything like that. But and if and if there were an Oscar Piastri that Haas were going to sign instead, or some really exciting driver on the Ferrari, you know, junior program that they wanted to swap in for Schumacher, then I'd be all for it. But I don't know, just bring back Hulkenberg, if Schumacher another year would be my opinion there we go I'm not the boss of an F1 team and if I were <coughs> it would be MasterCard Lola probably cars out on track because they were a terrible team that was just what I'm referencing um, other other credit cards are available I don't know 14 minutes and 26 seconds on the clock straight out go the Ferraris on a new set of uh, no on a used set of soft tires so the ferrari is going out on the set of tires that they used in the first part of qualifying maybe to just get a scyther in question for andrew oh more of an opinion i want his opinion really well, good luck this year's mercedes is this in the last so they've been a science radio Looks like a sunny south. She could be a slow track. Copy. Um, so they've now been back in Formula One since 2010. Is this car their worst car? No, but it is. It is their worst for ten years. Yep. Yeah. And obviously, the big question is: they've been about eight tenths of a second off on average in qualifying over the course of this year. Typically, that's not the sort of margin that a team can make up in the course of a winter. You know, they they think they've identified what's wrong with this year's car. Um, you know, it were, it's quite good, quite good on high downforce circuits. It's quite good on tyre wear. Uh, it's got a problem with um, it's, it runs too stiff. Uh, it's not good on high speed. It's got too much drag. Um, and there were question marks about the whole philosophy of the car. The sound you can hear, by the way, is Carlos Sainz just starting his qualifying lap on those, up on those used tyres. Um, you know, because their car is so different philosophically from the Red Bull, at least from the outside. Of course, all the engineers tell you that the, it's the underfloor that, that makes the difference now, which you can't see because in these new ground effect cars, excuse me, that's where all the, the downforce is being created. Um, so actually, maybe the side pod concept doesn't make too much difference. I don't know. Um, they're being very coy about what they're doing with next year's car, other than saying they think they understand why this year's car's not quick. But, you know, realistically, maybe they will surprise me, but realistically, you, you wouldn't expect them to make up that sort of margin on Red Bull, especially given that Red Bull are going to, you know, they're going to have learned an awful lot from this year. Um, and they will be making, no doubt, a big step forward for next year with their car too. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see come Bahrain next year. 11 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Still got a few more races to come this year, of course, as uh, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc are uh, both coming through the final couple of corners now. 1 minute 30.2 was the quickest lap time in Q1. And across the line, and it's a 30.4 for Sites, a tenth slower than he managed in Q1. Leclerc is going quicker, though, as he comes in out of the final chicane and ends up not going quicker. A 1 minute 30.486. So they both were about tenth slower than they managed in the first part of qualifying, which is not too bad, considering that was the second lap on those used tyres. The track will have rubbed in a bit more since they did that lap. And it suggests that science was wrong. The track isn't slower, even though the sun's come out, doesn't it? If he can go, if they can go both go quicker on used tyres. Yeah, true. Depends how long the sun's out for, I guess. Track temperature at the moment, 26 degrees. Air temperature is 20 degrees. Science and Leclerc, the only drivers to have set a lap time so far in 
Q2, but everybody else is out on circuit again now. Uh, Sergio Perez is at the head of the queue. Then I think it's Vettel who's just ahead of Verstappen. So here comes Perez out of the final corner. The top 10 advance through to the final part of qualifying. And Perez comes down towards turn one now in the Red Bull. Swings into the right-hander. Fascinated to see who's going to make a, a Mercedes a threat uh, for getting into Q2. I think if, if they don't drive at their best, then yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Jack, because you've got Norris, who didn't do a representative lap time. I think he's got the potential to be ahead of them. Ricardo drove well in the first session. He has the potential. Um, yeah, and, and the, two, the two Alpines look, dare I say, stronger. So it, it might be a bit of a struggle. Verstappen and Perez and Sonoda have all gone out on a used set of tyres. Everybody else is on a new set of the soft tyres. Verstappen through the first sector, quickest first sector of anyone. Three tenths quicker than his teammate Sergio Perez. And uh, Verstappen three hundredths up on Carlos Sainz in sector one. Perez coming around spoon curve at the far end of the circuit, the furthest point away from the pit lane. And then he charges back over the bridge, over the crossing. And Perez is just over a tenth away from Carlos Sainz starting the final sector. And the final sector is basically just the chicane. A lot of corners in sectors one and two compared to sector three. Here comes Perez. And he goes up into third quickest, a quarter of a second away from Carlos Sainz. That's reasonably competitive for him. Verstappen is up after the middle sector on Sainz's time. Vettel jumps up into fourth place, uh, only two tenths slower than Sergio Perez. Norris is a quarter of a second down on Carlos Sainz's lap time after the first two sectors. Verstappen goes quicker though, a tenth of a second ahead of Carlos Sainz, just over a tenth ahead of Charles Leclerc. So it's looking very tight, but Verstappen does seem to just about have the edge. Sonoda up into sixth place on his used tires. Norris goes fifth in the McLaren. Here come the Mercedes. Through the middle sector comes Hamilton. And he's two tenths down on Verstappen. George Russell, meanwhile, is one tenth down on Verstappen. Ocon's gone ahead of Alonso, so Ocon fourth and Alonso fifth. Onto the power out of the final corner. And Hamilton goes into fifth position. So he splits the Alpines. George Russell comes across the line and he only goes eighth fastest. No lap times yet for uh, Ricardo. Ricardo suddenly goes up into fifth place. Daniel Ricardo's back. Up into fifth position. And Bottas goes into 10th place. Here comes Joe out of the final corner and he goes 13th. So eliminated at the moment would be Norris, Vettel, Joe, Schumacher and Sonoda. Sonoda's just complained on the radio, the brakes are so bad. At the moment, the order up at the front, Verstappen, Sainz, Leclerc, Ocon, Ricardo, the top five, Hamilton, Alonso, Perez, Russell, Bottas, the top 10. And we're just getting a replay of a little slide for Fernando Alonso at Degna 2, but nothing too remarkable. Andrew Benson. I think Alonso was on used tyres on that run, is that right? Uh, no. No? No, he was on new ones. Oh, so Ocon was just quicker. A great lap from Ricardo. And he was the same in free practice he... earlier. He's struggled the last couple of years to get a handle, a full handle on the McLaren philosophy and especially be comfortable on the brakes. But this weekend, he's he's come alive a little bit more, hasn't he? I mean, we know that he's leaving Formula One next year. Maybe a little bit of pressure is off, but he's, he's, he's genuinely found pace within that car this weekend and is beating Lando for, for outright pace right now, which is which is good to see and good for it'll be great for his confidence moving forwards jenny yeah i think it was a confidence building display last time out when he managed to get fifth place bearing in mind he started uh, 16th on the grid i think it was or even 17th on the grid so he did a good job last time out but they've also brought some upgrades to that car now last time out was norris who got the upgrade package first they've bought enough parts so that ricardo gets the upgrade package this weekend and it's a, a kind of for looking at the philosophy for next season but um maybe it suits him a little bit better in that car good to see him back though when um, doing well out there everybody returning to the pits ahead of their second run in the second part of qualifying it just the thing is with ricardo it, 
it never felt like a... Okay, there's confidence in yourself and confidence in the car, I suppose, are two separate things. And it never felt like a... Because the amount of good results Ricardo's had that you'd think, right, he's had a good result now, he'll crack on. He won at Monza last year, and you think, right, here we go. And then that never materialized into anything. So it never felt like it was a it was a Ricardo's self-confidence kind of you, issue. But, but you're never he's never gonna portray that to the outside world. True. There's there's portraying it to the outside world. As a sportsman, you would never do that. But then it's when you get back to the hotel room, when you're alone with your own thoughts, that's when the doubts creep in. He won at Monza, absolutely. And it was a great drive. He won at Monza because a load of other people had issues. Yeah. And he comes through the field. He has some decent results, but it's the qualifying performances that are poor. Reminds me very much of my own season. Um, you know, it's... it's um, it's that kind of thing, and, and he can portray a confident man, but behind closed doors, it might not be the case. He might have had some self-doubt. A, a result like this, where he has absolute genuine pace, will do him the world of good. Four minutes and 25 seconds remaining. And... The order is Verstappen, Sainz, Leclerc, Ocon, Ricardo, the top five, Hamilton, Alonso, Perez, Russell, Bottas, the top ten that would be advancing through at the moment. But eliminated would be Norris, Vettel, Joe, Schumacher and Sonoda. But they're all going to do one more lap. I mean, look at the look at the Alpines. Really challenging up there this weekend. Great to see. I just, I can't believe yet again, Alonso. Alonso's leaving a team that looks like it's starting to get a little bit of momentum and, and going to where obviously Sebastian Vettel sits right now and Vettel's done a decent job to get that car into a current P12 at the moment but that car would presumably not make it through to to the third part of qualifying and, and yet again it'll be starting from scratch for Fernando and well but here's my <sighs> here's my philosophical question to you Samuel Bird. Vettel is two tenths ahead of Alonso at the moment. No, it's not. Alonso's two tenths ahead Sorry, of Vettel. Sorry, Alonso's two tenths ahead of Vettel at the moment. Is Alonso two tenths quicker than Vettel? So if you put Alonso in that car, is it actually it's three tenths up the road compared to that and suddenly it's the same as the Alpine? Deep question. It's a very deep question, but also you look at the, the, the season, the Alpine has always... Yeah, been quicker course. than the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin has struggled, massively struggled for qualifying pace. They look a little bit better in the races and they do tend to come through and points are scored. But qualifying performances have been, I think, very weak. I know what Fernando Alonso would say in answer to that question. If he was sitting here, he would talk off the record because he wouldn't say it on the record because okay. he's too polite. Would he say it, it or not? He would, would say yes. 100%. Would he say it in Spanish? He would and say, if he did, how would he say it? I don't know. I don't speak enough Spanish to say that. He would say, it, yes, I'm three times quicker than Sebastian Vettel. And he would use as evidence his pace advantage over Kimi Raikkonen when they were teammates compared to Sebastian Vettel's advantage yeah. over Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah. Don't disagree. It would be interesting to see what Aston Martin are like next year. Two minutes and six seconds on the clock. Verstappen, Sainz and Leclerc all remaining in the pits. Everybody else out on circuit to try and book themselves a place in the final part of qualifying. And it's going to be everybody out on a brand new set of tyres. I think Sonoda may struggle considering how bad he thinks the brakes are. At the moment, it's Joe Schumacher and Sonoda, those three who did well in Q1, who are 13th, 14th and 15th. Norris will want to get up into the top 10. Russell's in a bit of danger in ninth position. There's one fan with an air horn as, uh, as Vettel comes around the, the first corner. And now into the S's, the really spectacular sequence of corners. And then up through the left-hander of Dunlop for Sebastian Vettel, Jenny Gao. They have a new floor. They got it in Singapore, but because of the weather, they weren't really able to see what effect it was going to have. They were confident about it. That's why they put it on the car, so they told me. Um, but it looks like it's really starting to have a have a decent impact on, on that car. 
Perez does the fastest first sector that we've seen in the session so far. He's the only one of the front runners out on a new set of tyres, though. So, or the, you know, only one of the Ferraris or the Red Bulls that's gone out of the pits full stop and is on a new set of tyres. So you'd expect him to go to the top of the times to be perfectly honest with you. But Ocon's on a quick lap here as well. Coming through the middle sector now, heading up towards Spoon. Bottas has done a pretty slow sector one. Vettel's a couple of tenths up on Bottas's time. Bottas is the man in 10th place currently. Eliminated as it stands, Norris, Vettel, Joe, Schumacher and Sonoda. Vettel is going to be the first driver to set a lap time. Comes down the hill now and across the timing beam. And Vettel goes up into fifth place. Not bad at all there for Vettel. Ahead of Ricardo, Hamilton and Alonso. But everybody else is going to improve. Ocon it, up to second, Jack. Yeah, Esteban Ocon goes second quickest. Perez goes fastest now. So George Russell needs to improve because he's in 10th place. Valtteri Bottas comes across the line and he only stays 11th. Bottas doesn't improve in the Alfa Romeo. What can Joe do in the other Alfa Romeo? He goes up into 12th, so he doesn't get through either. So Schumacher, Sonoda and Norris are the drivers to watch. And Schumacher only goes 14th. Here comes Lando Norris. Well, actually, it's going to be Sonoda next across the line at his home race. And it's 12th place for Yuki Sonoda. Lando Norris or George Russell. Across the line comes Norris. He goes up to fifth place. So at the moment, Russell would be eliminated, but he's on a quicker lap. Fernando Alonso is on the bubble in 10th position now. Here comes Alonso. He goes second. So Ricardo is on the bubble. After all that talk of Ricardo, he could be getting knocked out in Q2. He comes across the line and doesn't improve. So it'll be Ricardo or Russell eliminated from the second part of qualifying. And it's Ricardo. Russell goes up into seventh place. Ricardo 11th out. 12th Bottas out. Sonoda 13th out. Joe 14th out. Mick Schumacher 15th out half a second away in the end Mick Schumacher nowhere near uh, getting through but Ricardo after all that chat that we just had uh, ends up being beaten by Norris by a couple of tenths of a second and is eliminated in the second part of qualifying just having a look at Mick Schumacher who has kind of overtaken Yuki Sonoda on the way out of the on the way out of the pits there, Mick Schumacher. So something that happened earlier on. I don't. I mean, it's a it's a bit of an irrelevance because he qualified 15th fastest in the end. And uh, we might now hear Sonoda shouting on the radio. Oh, and he then has gone back past Schumacher, has he? Oh, so dangerous for Schumacher. Copy. Where nothing really happened. Schumacher was weaving around. Sonoda sort of tried to pass him but it was clear that Schumacher was weaving around I've not got much to say about that do you have much to say about that? Oh, they, they should come and do Formula E and see some of the dangerous <laughs> stuff there if they think that's dangerous <laughs> so Perez Alonso Verstappen Ocon Hamilton here's Sonoda's radio oh, I did it my best yeah it was a pretty good lap for us uh, they were pleased with Sonoda Sonoda went three tenths quicker in Q2 than he managed in Q1 so, not bad at all. I'd be interested to know what the issue is at the AlphaTauri team with regards to the brakes, because both cars have been struggling with it. Um, I doubt it can't be a material thing, because the, the, the brake material is is a is a labored um process but it's the, it is the repeatability of of the discs and pads is pretty good now from all these manufacturers so it it must be a software issue how the the brake bias is blending out daniel we're p11 uh three milliseconds behind vettel yeah. Ricardo, even when he came into the pit lane just then, was was sort of banging his head and shaking his head, very frustrated to have been eliminated from the second part of qualifying. Three milliseconds is three thousandths of a second. Jenny? I tell you what, I think Leclerc got a little bit lucky then. I mean, Ferrari was sailing close to the wind. He ended up ninth because he didn't go back out again. Um... Yeah, I mean, that would have been a massive mistake if they managed to drop Leclerc out before he managed to get to the final part of Corley. Yeah, it's true. In ninth place, I think uh, it would have taken a lot for 
your Schumachers and your Joes and your Sonodas to have got up ahead of him, but... And, uh, oh, was that a lockup from Ricardo? Yeah, that's as the... He, as he came into the chicane, and that is maybe what cost him. Really frustrated with that one, Daniel Ricardo, as he returns to the pits and is out of the session, as is Bottas in 12th, Sonoda 13th, Joe 14th, Schumacher 15th. So, who, who are we saying for pole? Who are we saying for pole? Is it a stupid question? No, 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 not at all, because it, it's actually very difficult to, to answer, Jack. I, I still, I would, if I were a betting man, and I'm not, I would still put my money on Max Verstappen. But then after, it's very, it's close and it's very interesting. I think that Sergio Perez has just done a decent lap, so you think, oh, maybe he could be front row. You've got both Ferraris that look okay. Well done. Great job. Vettel ecstatic. Vettel ecstatic. Um, and then you've got Fernando Alonso. Um, throw him into the mix. I think that there's potential. If he gets it right and the timing right, crosses the line at the right time, he could throw it in the mix and get a front row or at least a front two rows. So there's, there's lots of interesting things to look out for. It's very... When you watch onboards of the Red Bull versus the Ferrari, how they construct the lap is actually quite different. The Ferrari is able to really wallop and ride curbs, and they're able to use more track because of that, um, especially at Degna and the final chicane, whereas Max Verstappen looks like he's not using any of the track, really, in comparison to Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, yet the lap time is very, very close. It's quite interesting. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lovely moment there. I, I don't know this for sure, but in the Aston Martin garage, there was a a young Japanese fan dressed in sort of green overalls with the Aston Martin logo sort of stuck on, you know, kind of like the thing your mum would make you when you were a kid. And he was standing at the front of all the mechanics as they were watching. So in my head, they've they've seen him around and, and have invited him into the garage. That's what I like to think has happened because he's certainly not <laughs> just a member of the team. That's for sure. Uh, Jenny, who's for pole? Uh, I'm still going to go Charles Leclerc. Uh, I know everyone's going to go, ooh, but they're not really on four. I still think he'll find something. He's had nine poles so far this season, and okay, he might have only converted two into wins, but I still think he's, when it comes to it, they turn the wick up and they've well, got just enough. Well, here's the thing, Jen. You oh, were yeah. talking about Charles Leclerc in ninth. He was, he's one-tenth behind Verstappen, who was third at the end of that session. It was so close out there. There was one thousandth between Hamilton and Sainz. So, yeah, I think Leclerc's still in with the shot. For such a long track as well. This track's yeah. 5.8 kilometres. It's one of the longest we go to. It's quite incredible that um, there's such a small gap between them. Benson San? Well, unless I'm mistaken on tyres again, Verstappen, Leclerc and Sainz have all got through qualifying on one set so far. So Correct. They, so they used new in the first session and used in the second. So they're a mile ahead of everybody else on that basis. So it's going to be one of those three. Um, I think it's going to take a Leclerc special to beat Verstappen. And it doesn't look like Leclerc. I don't, want to, I don't want to tempt fate. He doesn't look quite on it this weekend so far. But then he's looked a bit like that at other races this year and then has actually pulled out a special in yeah. Q3. So uh, I think it'll be Verstappen unless he can do that. Is my so, okay, the prediction is it'll be Verstappen unless someone goes quicker than him. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right, out onto the circuit we go. 11 minutes and 55 seconds on the clock. And we're about to see the battle for pole position. It was a Ferrari front, front row lockout last time that Formula One was here in 2019. Will it be the same today? Unlikely, because Verstappen looks so strong. And in the battle for the championship, he can win it this weekend. If he wins the race and sets the fastest lap, he will be the world champion of 2022. If he wins the race and Charles Leclerc is not second, then he will be the champion of 2022. And there are other permutations if he finishes lower down the order. And depending on uh, who qualifies where, We'll give you all those permutations tomorrow. Race gets underway. Race will nearly be done. Race will probably be done, actually, this time tomorrow. It starts at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning in the UK, 2 o'clock in the afternoon in Japan. And everybody is now...
trying to find a little bit of space on the circuit. Everybody is... Uh, so Ocon's on a set of used tyres. Hamilton's on a set of used tyres. Russell's on a set of used tyres. Uh, everybody else is on a new set of tyres as they make their way out onto the, to the circuit now. Because Alonso, I think, only did one run in Q1, and that's why he's able to have a new set, whereas Esteban Ocon, his teammate, is on a used set of tyres. Uh, Sebastian Vettel's still yet to leave the pit lane in the Aston Martin. So, Perez is the quickest time we've seen so far, a 1 minute 29.9, but I would expect pole position to maybe be in the 29 or 29.5, something like that is, is what I'm going to chuck out there as a prediction. Charles Leclerc just looking in his mirror as he comes very slowly towards the final chicane, give himself as much room as possible. He's going to be the first of the front runners to do a lap. Gets on the power. Coming down into the first corner now. DRS open and swings it into the first corner at 202 miles an hour. The Ferrari comes into turn one, which tightens and tightens into turn two. And Leclerc flies through those first couple of corners. Esteban Ocon through the first sector does a 31.7, which is four tenths away from the best first sector we've seen, which was set by Sergio Perez. Leclerc now climbs the hill, comes through the first sector, timing split, and does the fastest first sector of the day. Very quick, first third of the lap for Charles Leclerc, neat and tidy through the two Degna corners as well. Max Verstappen, though, is coming down into turn one, and he's going quicker than Leclerc across the line, and into the first couple of corners now. Alonso starts a flying lap. Sites has gone quicker than Leclerc in sector one. Verstappen coming through the first sector split now. What's he got compared to the Ferraris? He's quicker still. Verstappen almost a tenth up on Sainz and Leclerc in the first sector, but it was the middle sector where Ferrari looked particularly strong over the course of the weekend so far, and it is a quick middle sector from Charles Leclerc. He's coming down now into the final chicane. Ocon does a 1 minute 31.1 on his used tyres. Leclerc throws it through the right and the left at 55 miles an hour, then gets on the power again, out across the line, and Leclerc does a 1 minute 29.557. That's the benchmark time. Verstappen is going quicker than him. Perez across the line is 4 tenths slower. Verstappen coming through the middle sector and he's slower than Leclerc in the middle sector so they're pretty much neck and neck. Sainz goes second fastest a couple of tenths away from his teammate. Verstappen onto the brakes through the final chicane on the power up through the gears out across the line he's quicker than Leclerc by a quarter of a second. Max Verstappen on provisional pole position. Hamilton goes fifth fastest in the Mercedes, his teammate George Russell then usurps him. So Russell fifth, Hamilton sixth, Norris seventh, Ocon eighth, Fernando Alonso goes him into fourth position, uh, sorry, fifth position. So Alonso gets ahead of the two Mercedes, but it is advantage Verstappen, and by a quarter of a second as well. That's a good opening lap from Verstappen. A oh, very good lap indeed as we ride on board with Lando Norris just getting a little bit of space from the car in front. I don't think there was anything wrong there. Oh, he tries to get some space and whoa, huge wow. moment for Norris. So Norris was about to start his lap. He was coming in behind Verstappen and Verstappen, he nearly lost it. It's unbelievable. So Verstappen tried to, well, I don't know I if he did nearly lose it, or he's tried to warm up the tyres. Yeah. So I think Verst that's absolutely Verstappen's fault. Verstappen's so. tried to warm up the tyres. The back end has kicked out, and he's almost lost it by himself, but he probably was still in control. But Norris has had to take huge evasive action. It's the, I mean... It's a bit unnecessary, really. Because the they're both on outlaps, so I don't know if that counts as impeding. Like, if Norris were on a quick lap, Verstappen's getting a, a might, penalty, no problem. It might be a visit to... The stewards to explain why why that car attitude why the flare-up of the rear wheels at that particular moment because it was unnecessary but i don't think um i don't think that uh it'll be a penalty it might be it might be 
Maybe it may be a penalty point. I'm not sure. But I'm not sure. Sebastian Vettel's on a lap now in the Aston Martin. He's gone out in the middle part of the session where everybody else is in the pit. So he's got the track to himself as Sebastian Vettel. Four wins here with Red Bull in the past. And he's coming down towards 130R. Russell returns to the pit lane now, so it's just Vettel on circuit. He's eight tenths away from Verstappen. This is his one run of the session, Sebastian Vettel. And so he's got a shot here of maybe slotting in ahead of the Mercedes. Gets on the power out of the final corner. And Vettel does go up into sixth place, ahead of Russell, Hamilton, Norris, and Ocon. But they all did their laps on used tyres. So Vettel is the, apart from Norris, the slowest of the uh, drivers on new tyres. Very interesting uh, pace from Norris there in ninth place. We're also getting a replay now of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, uh, sorry, and uh, Lando Norris going side by side. And Verstappen apologising, I think, to Norris, holding his hand out the, and he said out the window, but, you know, out the cockpit and doing a little, yep, yeah, sorry, that was my fault so Verstappen on provisional pole position Leclerc second Sainz third Perez fourth seven tenths separating the top four Alonso fifth Vettel sixth Russell seventh Hamilton eighth ninth for Norris tenth for Ocon that incident with Norris and Verstappen will be investigated after the session as I say if Norris were on a quick lap that would be an instant penalty you, uh, I, I just wonder if on a on an outlap, whether impede it count, can you impede on an outlap? I guess you can, but well, it depends on what you mean by impeding. You know, if you, he's not impeded his lap time, no. But Norris had floored it through 130R and had to go onto the grass to avoid it. Here's some radio from Vettel. Okay, boys, good session. Oh, I really enjoyed it. This track is just so much better than all the other ones. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Great job. Vettel saying this track better than all the other ones. He said on Thursday that he'd, 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 he'd happily do a one-off return in t yeah. to, uh, to Suzuka, didn't he? So look, to back to the Verstappen incident, do I think the stewards are going to penalise Max Verstappen on the, with a grid penalty on the weekend he's poised to become world champion? No, I don't. Should they? I think that's a, a more open question. Well, what's your answer? I, I don't really know. I think you could argue it either way, just like you're trying to. I, d I don't know the answer, but it was a dangerous situation without question. It was a dangerous situation, but oh, I can't be bothered to give him a penalty. You know, you know what I mean? It's one of those where it's just like, ah, yeah, it's not ideal, but you're, it's not it's not great. But he doesn't know that Norris has floored it, does he? When everyone's on prep laps, who knows? Two minutes and 40 seconds to go. Well, obviously, Andrew Benson will keep you up to date on the BBC Sport website. If there is any decision to be made, uh, two and a half minutes on the clock, we're in for the final runs. The only the only thing that could really hurt Verstappen in this case is if Norris Vettel radio. Arigato gozaimasu, Suzuka. Thank you. I will miss this place, but we have tomorrow to go someplace. Vettel's last race at Suzuka as he's leaving Formula One at the end of the year and says thank you to Suzuka in Japanese on the radio. If Norris can prove that he genuinely lost pace in sector one because he had grass on the tires yeah. or, or dirt on the tires, then genuinely Verstappen could be in trouble if there's if there's data to back that up. Yeah, it's, it's almost like if there's a protest from McLaren, he could be in trouble. If McLaren don't really protest it, then it, one of those that could just pass by. Right, battle for pole position. Leclerc into turn one and two. Can he find a quarter of a second to beat Max Verstappen and hope that Verstappen doesn't find that time himself? Coming now up the hill through Dunlop. Chris, 
Thank you very much. We're in the final part of qualifying, the final laps to determine pole position. If Max Verstappen wins the Grand Prix tomorrow and sets the fastest lap of the race, he will be the world champion of 2022. And that could all start with a pole position. That's where he is provisionally at the moment after the first runs. But Charles Leclerc is improving on this lap. He's coming through the middle sector split now with just a third of the lap to go. And he's up by two tenths of a second on Max Verstappen. And Verstappen hasn't done a particularly good first sector. Charles Leclerc absolutely flying in the Ferrari. Gets onto the brakes, through the chicane, out across the line. His teammate Carlos Sainz is going quickly too. Here comes Leclerc and he doesn't quite beat Verstappen. He misses out by one hundredth of a second. Surely Verstappen is going to be starting on pole position now. Leclerc couldn't quite do it. Through the final corner comes Sergio Perez in the other Red Bull. Can he jump up the order? No, he remains in fourth place. Carlos Sainz finishes the session in third. And Max Verstappen, even though he's not on a particularly strong lap, is still going to set pole by the looks of things. He's 9,000 down on his previous best. Gets onto the brakes from 200 miles an hour, down to 50 miles an hour. Back on the power again. Bit of wheel spin. Drives towards the line. Verstappen doesn't improve, but it's still enough to take pole position for the Japanese Grand Prix. One hundredth of a second ahead of Charles Leclerc. Carlos Sainz in third. The top three separated by less than six hundredths. Perez will be fourth. Ocon fifth on the grid. Hamilton down in sixth. Alonso in seventh. Russell eighth. Vettel ninth. Lando Norris in tenth. But Max Verstappen, Chris, has put himself in the perfect position to wrap up the title tomorrow morning with pole position in Suzuka. on then out qualifying Alonso in a very very good effort from the Frenchman but Verstappen on pole and yeah, not the ideal start to that last lap but not bad guys not bad yeah well done Max that was uh, a couple of very mighty laps there well done I thought Leclerc had it then when he was and, and going think, quicker than Verstappen and I and genuinely then... think that he will feel like he threw it away yeah because there's one hundred he had two tenths in the pocket going into what looked like the final chicane and I don't know whether he just whoa oh, was Verstappen had a big moment at turn two yeah that that's a couple of tenths there for Max so but I think both could argue then looks like both could argue and he's got some body work as well which would have been absolute downforce and lap time Looks like from the rear of the car, Jack. Yeah, from the sort of floor or the rear. That is, uh, that was a that was a huge snap for Verstappen. Did well to to save it, but yeah, a hundredth separating Verstappen and and Leclerc. Sainz in third, Perez in fourth, Ocon fifth, Hamilton, Alonso, Vettel, Norris. The rest of the top ten. If it finishes like this tomorrow, then it will depend on fastest lap who gets the fastest lap to determine who is the or whether Verstappen is the world champion Ferrari's second and third I think we could be in for a good Grand Prix tomorrow I like that I like that setup but it, but so often this season it's been close in qualifying but then Verstappen disappears in the Grand Prix absolutely I mean if, if Charles Leclerc is to take this to the next Grand Prix in Austin if I think not. He's not only got to have a big day, but um, Carlos Sainz has got to have a huge day, yeah. Because he's really got to get in the mix and 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 help out. Max Verstappen then in front of the huge grandstand, climbs out of the car, waves to the crowd, who give him a appreciative cheer, having seen a very strong lap from Verstappen. Still, that first lap was good enough and. That's impressive enough in itself. Jenny? Could the weather tomorrow play a part in this, though? Rain expected when the race starts getting worse towards the race end. Could make it interesting. Yeah, absolutely. That's another thing to factor into the equation. Verstappen is crouching down, looking at the, at the rear of the car, because he'll know that he would have lost a bit of bodywork or a little bit of damage that he would have picked up down there. Charles Leclerc, second on the grid. A little high five with Leclerc as Verstappen goes over to get weighed and pats on the back at Ferrari on the pit wall as they appear satisfied enough with second and third on the grid. 
but even now Verstappen and Red Bull's pace in qualifying is coming through isn't it because Ferrari were and Leclerc was the pole man earlier on in the season and okay he then took pole in Singapore and Monza but Verstappen on pole in the Netherlands and in Belgium the team looking at the rear of Verstappen's car will bring you all the qualifying reaction and you'll hear from the from the front runners in the Checker Flag podcast which will be available to download a little bit later this morning and but we will hear from the top three in a moment down on the grid Perez fourth Ocon did a good job out qualifying Alonso yeah very very strong I mean we always I, I see Ocon right now as a number two driver um, maybe maybe his contract doesn't say that but I do because Fernando Alonso is one of the best of, of the last couple of generations but um, we're just about to hear now from the top three qualifiers at the 2022 well, Japanese Stappen, Grand Prix pole position fifth of the season 18 in your career tell us a little about the lap how was it? Yeah, it was uh, pretty incredible to, to drive here again, and especially in qualifying, you know, when you're on low fuel, these cars really come alive through the first sector. So, yeah, of course, very happy to be on pole, but also in, in general, just super happy to, to be back here. Yeah, you see you looking at the back of the car, I think something sort of fell off. What, what's, what yeah, did I you lost see? A part. I lost a part of the duct uh, in my final lap, so probably that's why I couldn't really improve. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the first lap was good enough. All right, and you're being investigated, it seems, at the moment about Lando. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I was just, uh, you know, driving quite slow, and I wanted to accelerate, but my tyres were quite cold. So then I had a big moment. Um, and then, of course, Lando was trying to pass me at the same time, so he had to avoid me a little bit, but luckily nothing happened. Good. Well, tomorrow, the race, you've done the right thing today, pole position, going for the championship tomorrow. How do you feel with the race car? Yeah, it will be interesting, first of all, to see the, the weather. I mean, some say it's going to be dry, some say it's going to be ra like raining at one point, at some point during the race, so we just need to uh, see what happens with that. And I'm quite confident we have, a, we have a good car, so, yeah, excited for tomorrow. Great. Thanks, Mike. Well done. John, a bit frustrating. It seems if that middle, middle sector here was really good for you. Tell us a little bit about the first and maybe the third sector. Yeah, well, uh, it's a very tricky lap around here because whatever you are, it, whenever you are fast in the first sector, then you lose out in the last sector. And I tried to find that balance in the last uh, in the last lap, but lost a little bit the tyres in the last sector and lost a little bit of time. So uh, yeah, it's so close though with everyone. So that's that's nice, and we'll try uh, to have a good race from there. Yeah. What about tomorrow? Because it is mighty close, like you've said. But of course, it's so important to get off the line going down towards one and the race car itself. How does it feel? Do you think going into Sunday? I mean, very lim very limited amount of uh, data going into the race, so uh, that's uh, uh, yeah always a challenge. But uh, the feeling was good with the car, so uh, uh, yeah, let's wait and see the conditions. It seems that it's going to have a bit of rain somewhere in the race, so uh, yeah, should be a fun race. And a lot of Charles Leclerc fans here and Ferrari fans get to take it to Max tomorrow. Yeah, it's uh, always nice to be here and see so many people passionate about this sport and being so creative, so hopefully we can uh, give a good show tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Charles. Thank well done. And Carlos Sainz, well, a mighty tight uh, top three. A mighty tight top three. Tell us a little bit about the lap itself. Yeah, it was a, a very clean lap, a very good lap all the way until the last corner that uh, I picked up quite a bit of wheel spin, probably just a bit too much credit from my rear tires in that lap and yeah it's a shame to be half a tenth again from Paul you know it's been so many qualities now with Max and Charles that we are all within half a tenth and uh, the last half a tenth tends to fall more to the other side uh, hopefully yeah towards the end of the season this half a tenth falls a bit more to my side and I can Get a, get a pole position. Yeah, and of course, speaking to the other two guys, obviously tomorrow's weather is looking a little bit suspect, but the Ferrari itself, how is, how is it going to work if it's wet or if it's dry? What's going to favour you? Yeah, I think the, the weather tomorrow is going to play its part. The rain is going to arrive. We don't know if it's going to arrive at 2 o'clock, 3 or 4, which is after the race. So, yeah, I think there's plenty of things to that could happen tomorrow. There's also a great, um, great opportunity starting in P3, you know, we managed to save also a set of softs in case we need it. So, yeah, I think we we are in a good position to, to fight Max tomorrow. Great. Have a good one tomorrow. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. 
So Johnny Herbert asking the questions to our top three. It is Carlos Sainz in third, in second, Charles Leclerc, and starting in pole position for his fifth time this season. It's Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. And this time tomorrow, he could be a two times world champion. You will have to join us to find out whether he can do it. A reminder, he would need to win the race and get fastest lap. And if he can only win the race, then Charles Leclerc would need to be second to stop him from being champion. There are loads of other permutations, don't worry. We'll have it all for you tomorrow morning when we get underway at 5.45 on Five Live. So make sure you listen to us then. We will be recording the Checkered Flag podcast, so subscribe and download that as well. My thanks to Jack Nichols, to Sam Bird, the production team, and of course to Andrew Benson, whose article I'm sure you will be able to read in the next little while when it comes up on the BBC Sport website. So that's all from us for now from Suzuka, Japan. It is round 18 of the Formula One World Championship. We will get the 18th race of the season underway tomorrow at six o'clock. Will it rain? Will there be sunshine? We'll give you all the answers tomorrow. Thanks a lot for joining us.